أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we will begin with uh, a new series إن شاء الله uh, with a comment uh, on the book uh, Kitab al-Riqaq from Sahih al-Bukhari or the book of softening the hearts from Sahih al-Bukhari uh, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to take benefit so Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he says in his Sahih <coughs> in the uh, book number 81 which will be the first hadith under uh, this book is hadith number 6412. Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Kitab al-Riqaq, or the book of al-Riqaq, which is the book of the softening of the hearts. And what is meant by this is that uh, Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah is going to uh, bring numerous uh, discussions, he's going to bring numerous topics and chapters uh, and these topics and these chapters will or normally under normal circumstances will soften uh, the heart. Uh, many of us and I included myself as well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, many of us uh, our hearts become hardened, uh, hardened with uh, ma'asi, hardened with uh, disobedience, hardened through a lack of a dhikr, a lack of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the hearts become hardened uh, with just uh, the, the, the everyday sh you know, hustle and bustle of life, uh, and the heart becomes hard when it becomes away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart becomes hard when it goes away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and so Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, he brings this book, uh, the book of al-Riqaq, or the book of softening the hearts. Uh, and in this book, he brings uh, numerous chapters and discussions that these chapters and these discussions will bring about a softening uh, of the heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit. And so the first chapter uh, that Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he brings under this uh, book of softening the hearts is Bab al-Sihhatu wal-Faragh wa la Aisha illa Aishu al-Akhirah. Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he says the chapter of health and free time and that there is no living except the living of the hereafter now underneath of this uh, chapter al-imam al-bukhari rahimahullah uh, he brings three hadith al-imam al-bukhari rahimahullah he brings three hadith and so hadith number one uh, al-bukhari rahimahullah he says uh, we were informed by al-makki ibn ibrahim who said that we were informed by Abdullah ibn Sa'id, and he is ibn Abi Hind, who reported this on the authority of his father, who reported this on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاغِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are two bounties that many people are maghboon in health and free time. Um, so here in this hadith, here in this hadith, the Prophet uh, wasallam, he mentioned that many people, if not most people, are maghboon in these two bounties. Maghboon in health and maghboon in their free time. Now, al-maghboon, al-maghboon, 
is a person in general, it's a person who has incurred a loss. Al Maghbun is in, in general a person who has incurred a loss. And usually when uh, the word Al Maghbun is used, is used in reference to buying and selling. It's used in reference to buying and selling. When a person is maghbun in buying and selling, uh, it's when he has incurred a loss, meaning he has a product. A person, let's say, for example, he's a businessman and he buys and sells products and he has a product that's worth lots of money. Its value is lots of money. Let's say, for example, a brand new uh, 2020 Mercedes Benz. He has a brand new 2020 Mercedes Benz and he wants to sell it. So someone comes uh, up to him <coughs> and he says, listen, I want to buy your brand new Mercedes Benz. I'll give you $1,000 for it. And he says, okay. And the man gives him the $1,000 and the, uh, the owner of uh, the businessman, he gives him the Mercedes. Now, anybody who knows anything about cars is going to know that a brand new Mercedes Benz is worth way more than simply $1,000. Way more than that. Uh, and so we're going to say that the businessman who sold this Mercedes is Maghboon. He is Maghboon. Why? Because he took something that had lots of value or its value was, was high. And he sold it and he took in return for it something that the value is, is not equal to what he has given. So this we call the person maghboon. This person is maghboon. Uh, and some of the, if you go to some of the Muslim countries and uh, you go to their court systems in some of the Muslim countries, the judge in the Muslim country will even... Uh, he will even invalidate certain contracts because of a person being maghboon. So, so for example, let's say a man, he lives uh, in, in, the, in his menzil, he lives in his, uh, in his mansion, and he wants to sell it. He has a mansion that's worth you know, $10 million. He has a $10 million mansion that he lives in, and he wants to sell it. And so someone approaches him and says, I'll buy it. I'll buy the mansion. He said, how much are you going to give me for it? He says, I'll give you $100,000. I'll give you $100,000. He said, okay, sold. So they write the contract. And the man uh, the, who owns the mansion, he, he turns over the keys. And the purchaser, he gives him his $100,000. And they walk away. So now uh, the man who used to live in the mansion, his son will come. His son will come and say, uh, Baba, what happened to the mansion? He say, I sold it. He said, well, how much did you sell it for? He said, I sold it for $100,000. Look, we got $100,000. And the son, he says, complains and says, no, what are you doing? This, uh, the mansion was worth five or $10 million. So then the son will go to the court and complain. And because of the, the father being maghboon, the court will reject and invalidate the contract, meaning that they will take back their home and uh, the man will return the $100,000. Uh, because this, we call this person maghboon. Maghboon. He has incurred a loss, meaning he has given away something. And what he's taking back in return is nowhere equal to what he has given. So now, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are two bounties that most people, or a lot of people, are maghboon in them. Their health and their free time. Their health and their free time. A person, uh, young, he's young, he has health, he is strong, uh, and he spends his youth, his strength, in front of a TV playing video games. He spends his youth 
and his free time watching soccer on television, basketball, football, watching uh, other people play sports, watching Netflix, show after show after show. Uh, he spends his health and his free time doing all of these things uh, that he's not getting anything in return from. He's not getting anything uh, in return from. So a, per some, a person, uh, may, for, he may spend his time doing something where he's going to get a dunyawi return, something uh, from the dunya. So let's say, for example, he might be a street sweeper. So he goes to work every day to sh sweep the streets, and a person may look down upon him, but he's, 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 getting, uh, he's earning an income. So he spends his time cleaning streets, but he's going to earn money from that time that he spent. Or another person who may uh, sit down in the corner and recite the Quran. Now he doesn't. Re that, that's not a a, a dunyawi uh, benefit. That's going to be what we call an ukhrawi benefit. It's a benefit from the hereafter. I'm going to take benefit from the hereafter. But they took benefit. Both of these examples are people who took benefit. What about the person who's sitting down and spends all of his days on video games or spends all of his days uh, searching through and watching pointless YouTube videos? What about this person? What has he, he's given away his time. He's given away uh, por portion, a portion of his life, some 10 minutes on this video. 15 minutes on that video, 20 minutes on this. Now, after he looks up, this three hours are gone. What has he gotten in return? Nothing. He's gotten absolutely nothing. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, these people are maghboon. These people are maghboon. They uh, have incurred, uh, they've incurred a loss. They've incurred a loss. <coughs> What about the people who spend hours on the telephone uh, talking about he said, she said? People who spend an uh, hour or two hours on the phone arguing about siyasa, arguing about politics. Uh, and at the end of that conversation, at the end of two hours, at the end of two hours of he said, she said, at the end of two hours of Democrat, Republican, so-and-so did this, Donald Trump didn't do that. At the end of all of that, what did they walk away with? What did they benefit? They spent two hours of their life, is gone. Two hours of their life, uh, of their lives are gone. What did they benefit? So they gave away their time. They gave away a portion of their life. What did they get in return? Nothing. What about, now even worse than this, even worse than this, what about the people who sit around wasting uh, their time uh, watching things on television and incurring sins because of what they're doing? So now, now not only a person who's watching a movie or watching a television show uh, that's, that has in it uh, haram things to look at, Haram things to listen to. Not only is his time, he, he, not only is he giving away something that's precious, something that has value, but he's re, he's what he's getting in return are sins. So not only is he on, not only is he zeroing out, but he's going into the negative. So he's he's. It's almost as if it's almost like a person who sells. He says, "I'm going to sell you." I'm going to sell you this Mercedes Benz, I mean, this brand new Mercedes Benz, and I'm going to give you fifty thousand dollars with it. What? And nothing in return. I'm, so you're going into the negative. You're giving away that which has value, and you're receiving negative. And so, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he in this hadith, he said, "Ni'matani," the two bounties. مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ That there are two bounties that a lot of people, a lot of people are مَغْبُونٌ 
in those two bounties. I mean, they're giving them away and they're receiving, they're incurring a loss in those bounties. Al-Sihhatu wal-Faragh. Health and free time. Health and their free time. So this hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encourages us not to waste our time. Not to waste our time. The second hadith that Al-Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimullah he mentions in this chapter, he says, we were told by Muhammad ibn Bashar, who said that we were told by Ghundar, who said that we were told by Shu'ba, who reports on the authority of Muawiyah ibn Qurra, who reports on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, uh, radiyallahu anhu, who reports upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, Allahumma la isha illa isha al-akhirah, fa aslih al-ansara wal-muhajira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O oh Allah, there is no living except the living of the hereafter, so rectify the Ansar and the Muhajireen. <coughs> uh, the, the, the third hadith that Al-Bukhari mentions in this chapter, he said, I was informed by Ahmed ibn al-Miqdam, who said that we were informed by Al-Fudayl ibn Sulaiman, who said that we were informed by Abu Hazim, uh, and his name is uh, Salama ibn Dinar, uh, who said that we were informed by Sahl ibn Sa'd, a Sa'idi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, Kunna ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil khandaq, wa huwa yahfiru wa nahnu nanqul al-turab, wa basura, wa basura bina faqal, Allahumma la isha illa isha al-akhirah, faghfir lil-ansari wal-muhajirah. So Sahal ibn Sa'ad, a Sa'idi radiallahu anhu, he said, We were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the trench, while he was digging, meaning the Prophet, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was digging, وَنَحْنُ نَنْقُلُ turab, And we were carrying away the dirt. And so he saw us, meaning he saw us uh, working. And so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O oh Allah, there is no living except the living of the hereafter. So forgive the Ansar and the Muhajireen. Now, for those who do not know the Ansar and the Muhajireen, these were the the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Muhajirun, they were the companions of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam who accepted Islam in Mecca. They were in Mecca with the Messenger Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. And they migrated from Mecca to al Madina with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they were called the Muhajirun. They were called the Muhajirun, the immigrants, because they immigrated from Mecca to Medina. They're called the Muhajirun. And the Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who were in Medina. They lived in Medina. Uh, they were from Medina. Those, we call them, they were called Al-Ansar. They were the Ansar. So the Muhajirun and the Ansar. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the trench as Sahal ibn Sa'd as Sa'idi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned. Uh, and he was digging and he was working. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was working, digging uh, the trench, which shows that leadership, a leader is out front. The leader, when he's requesting from his people to do something, he sh he's not only telling them what, that what should be done, but he's showing them what should be done and how it should be done. That's leadership, leading from the front. The Prophet ﷺ could have easily sat back and said, hey, someone bring me some dates and some, some lemonade and you guys dig this trench. The Sahaba would have went and they would have dug the trench. But the Prophet ﷺ was in the trench digging and the Sahaba, عنهم, they were carrying the dirt away. So Sahal ibn Sa'ad, a Sa'idi radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw them working. And he said, Allahumma, O oh Allah, la isha, illa isha al-akhira. O oh Allah, there is no living except the living of the hereafter. Faghfir lil ansari wal muhajira. So forgive the ansar and the muhajireen. And so, uh, 
the, the, when the Prophet said, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he saw the Sahaba working, <coughs> and they're sweating, and they're working hard, and they're dig, you know, they're carrying dirt, so they got dirt all over them. Their clothes are getting dirty. Their bodies are getting dirty. Dirt in their beard and then in their hair. Um, the, and others from the kuffar, others from the disbelievers, they're munaamun. They are living their life up. They're eating good. They're, they're, they're sitting in, in comfortable conditions. They're living good. While the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they're sitting here working hard, getting dirty. Their, their, their fingers are dirty, their hands are dirty, their bodies are dirty, their clothes are dirty. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a means to help the companions be patient, as a means for the Sahaba to be patient, he said, Allahumma, O oh Allah, there's no living except the living of the hereafter. Meaning that the life that these people, that the kuffar, the disbelievers, and their, uh, the life, their good life that they're living, their, their good food, their good clothes, their comfortable living, all of that one day is going to be over. Because in the dunya, is going to be over. In the dunya, all that's going to be done. And the real living begins... When the person meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. That's real life. That's the everlasting life. That's the life that has no end. And so what these people are experiencing, meaning these, uh, uh, the disbelievers, what they're experiencing from their food and their drink and their comfortable living, that's not real. Why is it not real? Because it's not going to last. It's not real because it's not going to last. And, and these individuals, the companions of the Prophet wasallam, who may have a little bit to eat, they may have only a little bit to drink, they may not have the very best of clothing or the very best of living conditions, but for them is the real life in the hereafter. Because this life is this not living. Why is it not living? Because it's not real. Why is it not real? Because it's not going to last. How long? How long is it going to be here? 50 years? 60 years? Speak to one of the elders who's 70 years old, 80 years old. Ask him, how long does it seem that you spent on the earth? They're going to tell you that it's, it's almost, it's, it went like this. Yeah, and you hear people all the time saying it was just like yesterday. I was in high school. It was just like yesterday I was in college. It was just like yesterday I used to be able to run up and down the street. Just like yesterday I used to be able to jump off a roof and I'd walk away with no problem. Just like yesterday. Because that time, it's gonna, it goes. It goes. That's why this life, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La Aisha illa Aishul Akhirah. There's no living except the living of the hereafter. Because that's real living. That's the eternal life. And so in this hadith, <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ encourages uh, us, we, we, we extract the encouragement to work for the hereafter. We extract the encouragement to work for the hereafter. And so when we look at the first hadith that Al-Bukhari mentioned in this chapter, where he talks about the person, many people being maghboon in their free time. And we took the second and third hadith that mention there's no living except the living for the hereafter. Then we find that Al Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah is encouraging us to spend our youth, our health, and our free time working for the hereafter. Al Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala is encouraging us through this chapter, to spend as much time as we possibly can working for the hereafter. So that we are not maghboon in our time. So when we, are, when we, when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, we'll be amongst those who will truly live in the everlasting life in Jannah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst them. So here, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to benefit from our time 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who work towards the hereafter. Ask Allah to accept from us our good deeds and our righteous actions. May He overlook our faults and pardon us all of our sins. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyana Muhammad.